Well, Faker did have to burn flash there, and it's been a solid early game. Hold that sleep. dot, Aria. Going forward. Big damage. Faker! Oh! Oh! The Mechanicus and Bell will get killed off by Kazi, and Mad Lions may have found a god here. But Kong is having none of it. He's able to do so. Big health comes across. Ward have to kick backwards. He's just going to have to kill off Viper. He's running for his life. His health bar is at one, and he's going to go dead. At 2K, is it a possibility? They get it lower, and lower! And the miracle happens! Chris Blow, there's the wild goat, that's what they were waiting for, and here comes Fiddle once again, dives onto the back line, looking for the damage here, Nobby is down, Chris is down as well, the road there found that page, he will not go out quickly, now Shawnee oh, Green, oh, big in, oh, big in, not it anymore, oh, big oh, stun, crying, down, and it's going to be in that target, does he have the subject to keep himself alive, it does not work, available as well, if he tries to turn it around, go I'm Shox, and welcome back to Ultimate List, the home of all esports' craziest and most legendary moments of all time. Finally, after a month filled with hype matches and shocking upsets, this year's World Championship has come to an end, with EDG crowned as our newest champions. EDG's path to the Summoner's Cup was long and arduous, overcoming three five-game series after a competitive group stage, producing some amazing plays every step of the way. But EDG weren't the only team making plays at Worlds. The tournament was full of highlights we'll be looking back on for years to come. In fact, that's exactly what we're doing today. So without further ado, here are, in no particular order, the five best plays from the 2021 World Championship. Starting off today's episode is a play from Owner's first game at Worlds, where the T1 rookie mesmerized viewers with his Talon versus Detonation Focus Me. Armed with Kari as Yumi as he roamed around the map, Owner controlled the entire game, swooping in and out of lanes, finding kill after kill. And when it seemed as if Owner's perfect 4-0 stat line was about to be ruined, the cat-carrying jungler annihilated four members of DFM. Be a sleepy graze. Oh, no. Get over the wall. Big, big shadow assault. Oh, parkour. Oh, no. Here we go, baby. Assassin's that's Creed. Jump forward. Leap in. That's some knock the end diplomacy. A triple kill for owner. Given the green light to go in after landing some initial poke, owner immediately assassinated Oriana with his Q and ultimate before she could use her shockwave. Then, with the second cast of his ult, owner cleaned up the rest of the fight for the quadra kill. Well, it would have been a quadra, but he had to pay the cat tax. Sadly, this year's World Championship was Khan's last tournament before his retirement from pro play. But the top lane legend made sure to go out with a bang, reaching the tournament finals with Dom Wan Kia while creating some stellar highlights along the way. One of those highlights just so happens to be the one and only pentakill from Worlds this year, making the play versus Rogue in groups. Faced with a 4v5 after Ghost was picked off mid, Dom Wan's lead was at risk with Rogue headed towards the Baron. But Rogue's chance for a comeback quickly became their demise after Canyon hit a huge Kiana ultimate off of Showmaker's gold card, giving Khan the perfect setup to shred through the LEC third seed. Now the hope is alive for Rogue. Stunned into the hook. Last and almost down, but he pops the stopwatch just in time. Supreme is there. Tanner will come out. It's a double for Khan. Benny, the hope was there for Rogue, but immediately it's slammed right back in their faces. Canyon and Khan can do no wrong. And Summer tries to get away, but Khan gets the Quadra, can he do it? Can he find the Penta here for Dom Wan Kia? Canyon's gonna chase down Inspired. Card hungrily, greedily looking for it. Inspired is not He's getting it to him. <laughs> he TPs. Canyon goes in for the damage. Khan comes in. Couple more shots. A Penta for Khan. Although Rogue failed to make it out of groups this year, Hansama left Iceland looking like one of the tournament's strongest AD carries, playing out of his mind both in lane and in team fights. Funnily enough though, Hansama's most impressive play at Worlds actually involved him running away rather than fighting, breaking FEX's ankles in one of the slickest escapes I've ever seen at Worlds. Over there, as Chris just pays a visit, is Han Sama battling against LWX. That's the bullet time. He's taken down relatively low, but Nara, he's teleported in. That's the curtain call, and Han Sama doesn't have a whole lot of places Ooh. to go. He's playing some DDR pretty decently here, is now trying no. to work out when he has the opportunity. He's got no. the strut available as well, and he gets himself out. Faced with a Jace flanking him from the river, Han Sama dodged almost every ability thrown at him all while baiting Nagari into the tri-bush before flashing over the wall to escape with MF's added movement speed. 
The final day of group saw LEC fans everywhere send their energy to Mad Lions, the region's last hope to advance to the quarterfinals. And Mad answered fans' prayers, winning their last two games to force the first ever four-way tie at Worlds. All that stood between Mad and Quarters was the LPL's fourth seed, LNG. A fierce battle that began with LNG jumping to a massive early lead, Mad slowly clawed their way back into the game, eventually finding themselves with the Baron and Elder buff. But when Armut got picked off late into the game, all hope seemed lost for the LEC as LNG rushed into Mad's base. Watching their Nexus turrets fall, Mad finally decided to fight, resulting in a game-winning base defense led by Karzi, who decimated LNG as Ezreal for the delayed quadra kill. And the last hope of Europe is still alive! And who better to conclude this week's episode than our newly crowned world champions, EDG. Specifically, EDG's top lane star, Flandre, who is absolutely smurfing as Graves in the quarterfinals versus RNG. Flandre began his Graves onslaught this series in game two, where he quickly grew a lead on the outlaw along with the rest of EDG, who dominated the entirety of Summoner's Rift. But during their bot lane siege, it seemed as if EDG might have overcommitted for the inhibitor, with RNG punishing the mistake by deleting Viper and JJ. Luckily for EDG, Flandre's Graves was there, and strapped with a Yumi on his back, the top laner prevented a potential throw by becoming an unkillable juggernaut, nearly acing all of RNG for the win. TPing back in, Flandre though kills off way, Ming is gonna drop as well, do they have the damage? No, Scout just eviscerates the team, Gala on the fountain, Gala goes down, it's top lane versus top lane, but Mako is gonna make it a two versus one. Triple kill for Flandre could be a quadra because he is not gonna stop. Going for the Nexus turrets themselves. Shock Blast gonna be tanked. Shahu gonna try his oh. hardest. He does not have the damage. A kill goes through to Yumi, and it's time to kill the base. EDG answer back in game two. And all of that just happened out of. I'm Shox, and that's been this week's episode of Ultimate List. Do you have a personal favorite play from Worlds that we forgot or an idea for a topic we can cover? Let us know in the comments down below or hit us up on Twitter at Lolisports. See you later.